All right, guys, we've got some important subjects to discuss today. Obviously, Tesla just reported their earnings. And as I said this week, it was all going to come down to automated driving and robo-taxi. And unfortunately, they said that was behind some future regulation and that some of the technology wasn't fully developed. Personally, I think they should be looking at the uh, LAZR company and the LiDAR technology because I believe that could be where it's at. Still keeping an eye on that particular play, but that also is going to have to be driven by news. They don't have the earnings to actually cause that stock to pump. Now, I've got someone in the scene with me here. This is my nephew. Hi. <laughs> Leighton, and um, uh, I'm actually stopping in to visit my sister here in San Diego on my way to Tennessee. I'm going to go to the Bitcoin conference. What do you think about that? Cool. Cool. Thanks for joining me in the video. Do you have anything you want to say to the good people? No. All right. <laughs> so, guys, I mentioned it in yesterday's video. If you're a Tesla shareholder and you're, you're looking at this and you're kind of uh, upset, thinking that this was going to be the breakout moment, one we were up against some very significant resistance. And the fact that we came all the way off of the lows and got up to this level above that area of 253, which we actually never closed a weekly candle above, it proved to be too much for Tesla. Again, all that's happening from a technical perspective right now is we are simply forming potentially a bullish cup and handle. Uh, and right now we've got the cup formed back at 253, that's the rim, and now we're gonna make the handle. And where are we gonna possibly come back to? Well, there is support around 233, but I think 222 is where it ultimately wants to go. Let's give it a little bit of time to pull back because the more time we give it to pull back, the more time it has to rebuild momentum and make another push at that wall, at that neckline of the cup, and potentially a breakout. And think about it this way, guys. He's telling you, that all they did was push the news back to October. And, the, and we see that Wall Street wants to get in on this potential for, uh, for Tesla. And we know that this is going to be a huge profit center because he said that it was their highest priority right now. And so all that we need is to get closer to that date. We're gonna swoop down, make the handle, and then we're gonna swoop back up and I think potentially break through. And so I'm actually not at all disappointed that Tesla's coming back. Obviously, I would love for it to go straight up from here. But if you take into consideration all of the opportunity in Tesla ahead, uh, automated driving is absolutely coming down the road. And I've talked about it before. Warren Buffett himself said that uh, his biggest concern about the insurance companies under the Berkshire Hathaway name was the automated driving could absolutely annihilate the auto insurance. And what did we see in the last CPI report? We saw that the, the insurance, the auto insurance companies were doing the biggest money grab they've ever done before. It was up 22, 29%, I believe. I can't remember the number, but it was double digit increases from the previous uh, year, I believe. It was, no, it was month over month, possibly. I have to go back and check that. But the fact is, they're gouging and they're trying to get every, every dollar they can right now because their, their business, I believe, is coming to an end. Eventually, we get automated uh, driving at hand and insurances are gonna drop. And so we're gonna see that industry die while this new industry climbs. And Elon and Tesla are on the forefront of it and the stock will pop again. Guys, we are seeing big tech going through earnings so far and it's not turning out uh, very good because I think a lot of value has been priced in. What is that story about? I'm just gonna wrap up this video and make this point. July 11th, a good CPI read, told us that we are going to get that rate cut in September. And whenever we get a rate cut, small cap stocks outperform large cap. And so we're seeing that rotation, which means that IWM is going to continue to be a place where you might want to park some money. We got a little pullback, bam, back off to the races. And so we're going to continuously be looking to play small cap forward because that is just barely beginning, right? And I'm gonna remind you guys of the Netflix chart. I wanna give you guys some numbers on that. Let me take you into the chart. And then I know you guys are like, Josh, you better not dare not cover Pan W because you told us you would cover it yesterday. We'll cover those two charts and we're gonna call it a day here. All right, guys, you can see what's been working and what has not been working. Uh, Amazon worked today. Actually, let me briefly comment on that. Uh, we had a beautiful 
uh, win today in the Discord. The Amazon calls had to come back a lot. Otherwise, you know, we were going to be hurting. They went up 300% today. If you had uh, accumulated when they were down in the low, you were very happy today. The original call that I had made uh, at the uh, handful of days ago, that was up in profit today. So we book it as a win. I know that it was a rough road and a scary road, but Amazon was ready to pop. And as I had showed you guys in the last video, we had that uh, bullish inverse head and shoulders pattern and it popped just like we thought and we hit the target that we were expecting to hit and so that turned out to be a beautiful profitable trade if you don't know what I'm talking about I'm talking about the chart goat university it is a fabulous community and I'm putting together something special now don't worry I'm gonna get to that pan w chart here in just a minute I'm putting together something special we're gonna do a small account challenge and um, I'm going to break down the dynamics of that in one of my coming videos this week where we're going to start off with $3,000 and we're going to take that to $10,000. That's going to be the goal. So uh, if you want to be involved in that and you want to follow along, then go and get subscribed at the Chart Goat University. I'll leave a link in the top pinned comment. All right, let's go look at some charts. Overall, you can see Amazon was the only big tech stock that was ended the day in the green, the rest are neutral, and we're seeing that rotation over into small cap. I wanna remind you guys, because I think we're gonna see it, I talked with you guys about this yesterday, we got this head and shoulders possibly forming on the SPY. I'll just draw it out for you really quickly. Got the left shoulder, got the head, we've come back, this is all that we have to go high at this point. We don't have to go any higher at this point to be able to come back. I think 549.60 is the number to watch. And if we get beneath 552, then I would say be on watch for a move back to 549.60. Now, if we break this neckline, then it's going to be 545 is target one and 540 is target two. Let's go quickly look at the Pan W chart. Guys, this is a bullish chart. And there's a couple things I want to point out to you. Pan W is going to benefit through CrowdStrike's problems. CrowdStrike chart has gotten absolutely destroyed. Pan W chart is looking very, very bullish. We're in a bullish descending channel. We've back tested structure, which is something that you would hope to see. Right there was the back test of structure. Uh, this has been a bullish play when you got over the middle of this channel from 330 all the way up to 340. This was a no-brainer. Now we're looking for a breakout of this channel. Now this might and could take a little bit more time to pull back before breaking out of the channel. But I'm going to tell you guys, it's absolutely on watch. If you didn't get in at 320, the next opportunity would be for the touch of the middle of this channel for another move to push higher. Ultimately, our up targets are 345 and 350, and I don't see why Pan W isn't going to continue to climb because it's got all the bullishness in the chart, it's retesting structure, and it's building momentum. And I think this whole crowd strike event uh, was very suspicious, and uh, I think that companies like Palantir and Pan W, that even though they are at the top of their range, we're gonna be looking for uh, potential cyber problems, cyber attack problems in the future. You have to remember, I read to you guys at the beginning of the year, okay, Goldman Sachs always lays out their clues and they said that they saw the potential of these types of problems in 2024 and out of thin air, they begun to manifest themselves. So it's gonna be companies like Palantir and companies like Pan W and a handful of others that are gonna do very well. So we're gonna keep watching them to the upside. Nothing wrong with these charts right now. They're looking straight bullish to me. It doesn't mean though that they're going straight up. We wanna be looking for the best possible entries. Guys, I'm gonna leave it there. If you liked it already, uh, give my man uh, uh, Layton here a like, a thumbs up for this video, for his contribution. Uh, standing sentinel with me and uh, sharing his house. My sister just moved into this place uh, just a couple of days ago. So two days ago. two days ago. So if you're wondering why the furniture isn't put all in place, uh, they just moved in and uh, she was gracious enough to let me stop by and shoot a video while I was passing through town uh, so I can come over here and hug some of these guys. Uh, I don't think you can see my niece. Where is she? Tegan, okay. go say hi. Let me see. Let's find Tegan. Ah, there's Tegan. <laughs> say hello. Hello. <laughs> These guys are the best. All right. Just wanted to say, appreciate each and every one of you guys. 
Find me in the Discord where I'm going to be dropping more technicals and answering more questions. We've got the best community over there. I uh, continue to appreciate the guidance that Puddin16, Spy Lord is giving, as well as many others. Uh, guys, um, I am, next stop for me is Tennessee tomorrow for the Bitcoin conference where I'm going to listen to Michael Saylor, Kathy Woods, Donald Trump, RFK, and a number of other important speakers, and I'll be sharing with you uh, what they've got to say. And I might be able to do a technical Tuesdays on Wednesday or Thursday with my man Tim when I get to be, uh, when he'll be there in person. He's traveling today, so we couldn't do our regular technical show, but it'll all come together this week, and I'm going to stay connected with you guys in these choppy markets. Okay, one last chart I forgot I wanted to show you was Netflix. Let's go check that out. Okay, guys, I've been saying that this chart was in trouble and we're continuing to see a downtrend. I've got alerts on my chart for an up move or a down move, and I think these two white lines are going to uh, show us the path. The next cross of either 639 to the downside or the next cross of 650 to the upside is going to give us direction. Uh, the upside, if we do get above 650, we're gonna to go to 664, and if we get below 639, we have the potential to go all the way down to 600, so I want you guys to stay on top of the trend lines. I've got it marked, it will send me an alert, and then you can see this little pop-up where it says Netflix, one day crossing horizontal line, and it'll shoot me an alert and I'll jump in and I'll let you guys know which direction I'm going, whether it's short or long. Peace and blessings. Hit that like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.